Alright, so we're gonna do this in one take, because I keep messing up, and I don't really fucking care at this point, as you can understand. So, hey, it's me, Hamdoop, everybody's favorite mod dev. And today we're gonna give a, a sick tutorial on how to install Thunderkit for Unity. So, we can develop mods in Unity in Editor. It's crazy. It's really nice it's also it also breaks a lot but it's really nice if you don't like typing in add component every time you want to add a component to a to a game object you just get to add it and then you get to type in values and it works wild okay so i'm also going to be showing you how to set up a mod in thunderkit just so you have a basic mod that you can load it's going to be a pretty pretty fun process so first we're going to make a new unity project right uh, make sure it's in 2019.4.26 F1. This is the Unity project that, uh, or this is the Unity version that, uh, Risk Rain 2 uses after SOTV. So, um, it's gonna be fine. We're gonna, we're gonna use this, because if you don't, well, your shit will break. And that's not good, right? We don't want that. And it won't load. That's the other issue. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to Thunderkit repo, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Thunderkit, and then I'm gonna go here, right? Get, get to this page. I'll link it in the description. I'll just, it's fine. I'll link everything you need. So, you're gonna go to clone, and then you're gonna click on this link. You want the HTTPS uh, link for the GitHub repo. Now, you're gonna go to the, the package manager when you get in Unity, and... It's going to take a second to load because it's going to load every Unity package ever and you really don't want them, but it's going to load it anyway because fuck you. So once that's done, I am personally going to change it to in project so you guys can see that I installed Thunderkit, right? So once it loads, you're going to go to the plus in the top left and you're going to click uh, add package from git URL. And we're going to paste that link we just grabbed from the repo, right? It's going to take a sec to load. Uh, don't worry about that. So... You're going to see this window pop up. It might be small, I don't know. It depends on what you've done before. And first, we, we're, we're going to go to import configs, right? And we see this is like a tiny little import config. We don't want that. We want a big one. We want one that has options, right? So we're going to go up to tools, and then we're going to go to Thunderkit. And now we're going to go to packages inside of Thunderkit, right? And you're going to click on this, this drop down right here. Look for var2 import extensions. It's going to give us a lot more options with Thunderkit. And this is honestly just the way to do this shit. Because I, trust me, this this saves a lot of time. You don't have to go looking around for like R2 editor kit and everything else you want. Um, you're still going to have to go looking if you want MSU. Which you probably don't unless you're making a big content pack. Uh, it's up to you. You're gonna have to, like, read up on what MSU actually does, because it, it's very... It's very... Uh, specific, right? It's, it's, it's only really useful for, like, massive content packs. But we're gonna install our 2 editor kit. Uh, you don't have to, but I'd suggest it heavily, because it's a much... It's good. Okay, so you see how this didn't change. Sometimes this happens, right? So, we're going to go to our Thunderkit settings, and then we're going to delete the import configuration. Just delete it. It will regenerate with our new options. It, this happens a lot. I don't know why, but it does, so I guess cry. Uh, and then how we open that met send menu back up after you close it, you go to Thunderkit and then settings. So now, wow, look at this. We have everything we need. Crazy. So, um, first, okay, so, this tab, this tab right here, it is important if you want to do stage building. If you want to do stage building, you're going to click everything. And the reason that is, is because it will give us the layers required for stage building. I'm not going to do a tutorial on stage building. There is a tutorial out there by Jace. Uh, I will link it down below if you want to do stage building. Got it? Got it. Okay, so I'm going to just click nothing because we don't need any of that. We don't We don't need that. Okay, so here is where we're going to look. So there's BepinX, R2 API, multi Multiplayer HL API, and R2 Editor Kit. 
Multiplayer HLAPI is a modified version of Unity's HLAPI package. Multiplayer HLAPI package for Risk Rain 2 development. Um, if you want to use VAR2 Editor Kit, you're going to need this. Luckily, Import Config already downloads it with VAR2 Editor Kit. So we're, we're kind of good there. I'm going to leave all this on. Um, Batman will always throw one error. I'll show you that later. Batman will always throw one error, and you don't have to worry about that. It's just silly. Um, so we're going to go over here to Thunderkit Settings, and you're going to see Locate and Load Game Files for Project. So we're going to go Browse, right? And we're going to go to our folder, our Risk Grain 2 folder. I already have mine pinned. Uh, you're just going to find your EXE. Um, there's a really easy way to do it if I open up Steam real quick. So, just go to your library. Go to Risk Grain 2, wherever it is. And click on the cog icon and then manage browse local files. And you are literally brought right to that, right to this folder that you need, which is great, right? So you're going to put that in there. And then you're going to click import. Now, this is usually the longest part of the process. We're going to have to say your bit because it's literally importing everything from the game. Pretty, pretty fun. Pretty fun. Okay, so it's going to be like API update required, right? And it doesn't really matter what's in here, right? Because just hit no thanks. You do not want to click on that. That will break your project. It will fuck you up. It will literally just explode your Thunderkid project. You will not be able to use it. Do not click it, please. Okay. I think we're done. We're done. Okay. So. Wow, we have Thunderkid now, guys. This is crazy. So, as I have R2 Editor Kit, we're going to have this drop down. That's how you check. Pretty cool. Now, we're going to have a couple of errors, especially if you're me, because mine is cursed. You probably won't have these issues. So I'm just going to create a couple folders real quick. So this is going to be your mod name folder. This is going to be the name of your mod. Um, It's going to it's gonna be where you put all your like mod stuff, right? And then below that, we're going to create a assets folder, right? So this is where our assets for our mod name, our mod goes, right? Uh, we're going to build this in the asset bundle. This is where you're going to put all your stuff. Okay, so now that we have an assets folder, we're going to create three things in this folder, right? Okay, so first we're going to create a manifest. It's under Thunderkit, right? So we're going to go through here, manifest. Thunderkit manifest. There we go. There's our manifest. Call whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Uh, I'm going to call it example mod. Cool. Cool. Manifest identity. This is where you put stuff about your mod. So we're going to add a couple of things to our manifest. Usually, all you're really going to need is a S assembly definition and a asset bundle definition. Now, if you're planning to, like, put your shit, put your Thunderstore stuff in here, you can put files. But uh, I'm not, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, so first, we're going to assign the asset bundle. So we're going to call it asset bundle. Dot, we well, call it whatever the fuck you want. Uh, dot bundle. And then assets one, key, and then we're gonna choose that folder we made before assets folder. Bam. Asset bundle done. Now we're gonna need to make an assembly definition. This is the second thing that goes in this folder. So, call it mod ASM def or whatever. I don't really care. Okay, so. But make sure you click override references because we're gonna need this to to add our stuff. Okay, so for basic stuff, Defnex dot DLL, and hook for R two dot DLL. R, not that R two API dot DLL. R two dot DLL. Very important. Very important. All these are pretty important. And also add mono dot Cecil. Okay, these are basic things. Now, other things you might want. HG Sharp Utils. HG Unity Utils. Uh, you're going to maybe want... Uh, well, you're probably going to want... Unity.addressables. Very important one. Uh, don't... Why do they keep adding that? Um, that's mostly it. Uh, a lot of this stuff is just situational, right? So, some of it you may not use. Some of it you may use. 
uh, legacy resources API is if you don't want to use addressables, but I'd suggest using addressables, so just don't use it, I guess. Uh, oh, and I, uh, monomod.utils, that's another one they have, that's good. Okay, so we have all of those, right? So, apply those, and finally, the third thing we're going to make in here is we're going to make our base Unity plugin. Base Unity plugin, this is, this is, uh, why we generate a DLL, this is, this is how we load the mod. Uh, I mean... You could do it without it, but I tend to do it anyway, and I'm just going to do it off of what I do. So, create a C-sharp script. I call it main, whatever, the, I don't really care, but main is what I'm going to call it, right? Click on it twice to open up uh, Visual Studio, and it loads. Okay, so we're going to do using WebConnex, and we're just going to create a base Unity plugin. Now, I am going to assume you know what you're doing with a base Unity plugin, uh, because that is also on the wiki everywhere, and I am not teaching that in this video to save time. So, make your base Unity plugin here, save it, save it, saved, great. We have everything we need for the mod. Awesome. We're going to go back to our manifest, and we're going to add our assembly definition to this manifest. One. Easy. Mod ASM def. Bam. Good. I'm going to add a random image in this folder because I need to have something to load in an asset bundle. So it generates one. Sick. Got it. One more thing. Create new folder. For your pipeline. So I'm just going to call it pipelines. Very intuitive. I know. Um, We're going we're gonna to go to Thunderkit. Pipeline. Now we're going to do this quick. Okay. I'm going to make a basic pipeline. If you need more stuff, uh, ask somebody. I'm not teaching that there. So we're going to need a stage manifest files. Easy. Uh, doesn't need anything. Uh, stage assemblies, stage asset bundles. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you can do some other staging pipelines if you need them, but I don't, so I'm going to do exactly that. Cool pipeline, right? So, don't touch these unless you know what you're doing. Don't, Especially don't touch the artifact uh, pass unless you know what you're doing. And that's pretty much it. So now we're just going to load in our uh, mod, mod manifest, and execute it. Bam. And look at that. We finished execution. Finally, to find your mod, all you're going to need to do is go into show in the explorer and go into your thunderkit file and then the asset bundle staging is where your asset bundle is going to go and libraries is where your mod is going to go bam really cool awesome mod asm def is mine cool we're awesome we're done we're done that's it that's all you need to know basic thunderkit okay now obviously there's stuff to learn like uh how to make content in thunderkit and all but this is just a basic mod setup right if you're using a var2 editor kit you don't actually need to do all this setup and it actually does it for you which is really nice really really good of Nemi to do that so we're gonna right click var2 editor kit wizards mod author name km nuke mod thunderkit this is the internal name. Mod name is internal name. And it also should follow camel case, which is, you know, no spaces caps for each word. Human readable. So this is going to be thunder hit mod. So this is the one with the spaces. And then description. This is my mod. And then you're going to click run wizard. And it's actually just going to create all the stuff you need right here. And it even creates an asset folder. That's great, right? I'm just going to drag this in here. Anyway, so it actually will add everything you want in here anyway, too. So R2 API, Monomod, everything, everything you want, everything you want. Sick. Good good on Nebby for making this. Um, I think there's also stuff in there for MSU, but since I don't have MSU, it's fine. And this also creates your weapon plugin and also your manifest with your assets and your ASM devs. Awesome. Really cool thing by Nebby. Uh, a little time saver, and then we're just going to plug that in, and it works again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it for the guide. Um, 
that's all you need to make a basic mob with Thunderkit. Uh, if you want to go more in-depth again for content, then of course look into it. Um, content creation of Thunderkit, we don't have much documentation, so went went. Uh, but we do have stage documentation by Jace if you want to make a stage. So, I'll link that up below again, and I'll see you guys on the flip side.